Hey there everyone, this is Danielle, playing some ukulele. Uh, this isn't really my first look at the game, I have played it on the, um, the Windows PC version before, uh, but I haven't played the Switch version yet, so I'll be seeing how they differ, and basically taking a general review of the game as well. Uh, so I think that'll be, that'll be good. Um, oh, by the way, this is just a pre-order of Mario Maker 2, it won't let me play it yet, so don't get your hopes up. Um, I have to wait for the release date, just like everyone else. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, ukulele. Uh, basically what this game is, is, um, a bunch of the people who worked on the Banjo-Kazooie games, uh, basically crowdfunded to make another spiritual successor to those games. Um, obviously they didn't have any of the rights to the characters from the original, so they made basically new characters and made a game that has the same concept, but with different characters. Uh, in some ways it's a big improvement, because, for example, uh, the transformation character, instead of being, you know, a kind of racist witch doctor stereotype, you have a cute scientist girl, which is much better. Um, uh, and in some ways it's not quite as good, I think. Uh, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, but you, you can see the, um, the Banjo-Kazooie DNA here is very strong. Uh... So yeah, it's, it's definitely meant to be aping those games in, in a, to a great extent. Uh, if you're not familiar with those games, they're a they were two they, they, they were two um collectathon platformers for the Nintendo 64, um sort of in the vein of Mario 64, but uh, a bit closer to like to the way Odyssey worked because you went to get the ten jiggies in each world and you weren't kicked out when you got them. So it was more like Odyssey's moons than like the stars in Mario 64. Um, and probably that was one of the things that inspired how the Moons and Odyssey work, honestly. Um, so yeah, this, this game is... It, it's the same basic concept as the two Banjo-Kazooie games for the N64, but with different characters. Uh, and there's our two characters, and let's get started. <laughs> I forget how much opening cutscene this game has, I think it's a decent amount. Uh, you can see in the corner there, doing a little roll thing, that's basically, um, there was a move in Banjo-Kazooie called the Talon Trot that you could do, where, uh, Kazooie popped out and ran around and you could travel a lot faster that way. Uh, this is basically the equivalent move. It also helps you go up hills, kind of like the Talon Trot does, so yeah, same thing, basically. Um, it's taking a while to load. I don't know if it's always going to take that long. Um, but I assume this is just giving us a bit of an intro. Uh, so Highbury Towers here, it's the equivalent of, um, Grunty's Lair in the original Banjo-Kazooie. All the levels are inside there. Um, and that's where the villain hangs out. There he is. The, the villain is literally capitalism, which I think is pretty cool. See, his name is Capital B. <laughs> it's pretty great. Uh, all those ledges and stuff you can see there, we will be running around on those later. So, yeah, I look forward to that. I don't think I can skip this. Oh, I can skip. I don't really want to, though. I want to show the opening cutscene a bit. <laughs> it's cute. Rude. I'm not sure if Dr. Quack, like, rebels against Capital B at some point, but I feel like he should. Or they should, I don't know. Yeah. The novel has a 64. See what they did there. Yeah. 
So yeah, you can see they're doing a a free market capitalism thing here where they steal everyone else's product. <laughs> World 4's golf course. Yeah, the original Banjo-Kazooie games were very meta and tongue-in-cheek. They're doing the same thing here, it's very cute. It's the same basic style of writing. So you can see they're stealing all the books with their with their novel as a 64. The special book. Ooh. The intro is kind of long, but the original game's intros were kind of long too, so they're probably just trying to get the same style. So yeah, here's, here's Yuka and Laylee. Obviously, you know, they're the equivalent of Banjo and Kazooie, respectively. special book is one of those. Oh, I think that's it right there next to Laylee, actually. <laughs> also, yeah, um, Kazooie was kind of a jerk, and Laylee is also kind of a jerk. Um, it's just part of the series' charm, in my opinion. <laughs> So yeah, that, that would be the special book being stolen away. You can see the golden pages sort of fell down everywhere. Um, those page, they're called the pages, they're the equivalent of jiggies or power moons or stars or whatever. Um, we want to collect those basically. Uh, okay, so we can now play the game. There's a couple moves to get out of the box. We can do a little flutter like this to gain some more height. Uh, and that's actually... That's about it, actually. We can't do very much out of the box. We don't have any attacks yet. Uh, that's that's true of the original Banjo-Kazooie as well. You didn't get very many moves right at the start. You had to go through some tutorial. Uh, we can't get up there yet because that's a slippery surface. We need to learn the rolling move that you saw in the loading screen. You also can't open these chests that are all over the place yet. Uh, gotta learn some moves first. So yeah, just like the original Banjo-Kazooie games, uh, you have to learn a lot of different special moves through the game to access different areas and unlock stuff. The snake wore pants, would he wear them like this? <laughs> I love this. Uh, so this is, this is Trouser, the honest and dexterous salesman. He's the equivalent of um, bottles or jam jars from the Banjo-Kazooie games. He's how you learn new moves. Uh, but you have to give him a bunch of money to do it, basically. Uh, just like in those games, you had to... See, it's called quills. That's the equivalent of notes from um, Banjo-Tooie, basically. Okay, so we're going to learn a move to open these chests. Here we go. Okay, so we've learned a basic attack now, so that's a good start. And we can break these chests and get quills out. Uh, the first time you collect something, it usually tells you what it is. As you can see, the quill is telling us what it is. That happened in the original games as well, so they're obviously aping that bit of the style. So yeah, we just gotta grab a couple of quills in order to learn the next move we need. I think butterflies do. Oh, okay, right. Um, butterflies work like in Spyro, they fit, heal you, uh, basically. 
I believe there are just enough quills lying around to get us to the five we need without any extra moves. Well, I could be wrong. Oh, uh, the controls are pretty good. Ah, uh, nice and tight. Okay, we now have the five, five, uh, five quills <laughs> that we need, so we go back to Trouser in order to learn his next move. Um, and yeah, so basically you have to collect a bunch of quills in each level in order to be able to afford the moves you need. Uh, very similar to Banjo-Tooie. Not so much the original Banjo-Kazooie, that one worked a bit differently. Okay, there are more than five we can get here, actually. Um, wow. <laughs> I'm not sure if we can get those ones. They might be too steep. I also forget whether this game has fall damage. Banjo Kazooie did have fall damage. I don't remember if this game does. So I might want to be a bit more careful. You learn some like proper gliding and hovering and flying moves later, I think, but we haven't got them yet. All we have is a little bit of a double jump. Give us the next move, Trouser. Oh, he didn't give us the mood, he's jumping the door. <laughs> didn't actually give him the quills. Okay, so yeah, it's just a bit of a tutorial area here. Uh, we could go this way if we could go up the steep hill, but we can't yet. So we do have to go this way and do a little bit of platforming instead. Oh yeah, not too tricky. <laughs> Tutorial classic. <laughs> uh, I believe to dive here, which I think you do with ZL. Yeah, you have a separate, separate health, like, bubble air bar thing. Uh, that was true of Banjo-Kazooie as well, although not Mario 64. As you can see, it's very meta and funny. Uh... <laughs> I'm guessing those are some enemies. <laughs> Fire us, and I am 50% of us. <laughs> then I'd attack them with why. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's right, uh, Yuka can nom the butterflies from a distance, like this. Just for tapping the A button, which is pretty cool. Uh, in, um, Banjo-Kazooie it was honeycombs instead, which made more sense because you were a bear instead of a, a lizard. And you couldn't grab them at a distance, but they weren't positioned in midair either, most of the time, so that was okay. Honeycombs is an enemy in this game, so it's a bit different. Oh no. A bookmobile? I don't know why the door opened up after they told you to leave, but you can just walk straight in. <laughs> so yeah, Ivory Towers, it's basically Grunty's lair. Uh, all the levels are inside the tower, and this is the big place where the overworld is, essentially. <laughs> you gave himself a short tutorial on the way in. 
<laughs> uh, there is a pagey in this room. You can see it's up there. That'll be the first one we collect. As you can see, it's got a face. Like a lot of things in this uh, series, the World One boss. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, so yeah, we just gotta climb our way up there to pick up that first pagey, and I think that unlocks the first actual level. Yeah, it's not too tricky. It is a bit easier to climb up there with some later moves, but with what we've got, it's not too hard. It's not supposed to be hard, it's the first objective in the game, so... Also, yeah, you can see uh, this little uh, vice president thingy is here too, which is cute. <laughs> uh, the first world is up there. You can see it's got one of those steep slopes. We can't climb that just yet, just demonstrate. You just slide straight down. Uh, we need to get the rolling move in order to get up there, which I believe Trouser will sell to us once we have the first pagey. So yeah, this is just some basic platforming, nothing too tricky. Yeah, we gotta go this way. Just a couple of moving platforms and things, you know, the usual stuff. Uh, yeah, I just gotta get on top of the Capital B statue here. <laughs> okay, so that's the first pagey. There we go. Inside the all powerful one book. The one book. So yeah, we've got to get, got to get back to Pages, and they unlock the Grand Tomes, which are the warps into the different worlds in the game. Uh, it's very similar to the way Jiggies worked in the Banjo Kazooie games. You used the Jiggies to unlock the levels. In this game, you use Pages to unlock the levels. Okay, we have to go talk to Trouser again because we need to learn the role in order to actually reach the first world. Uh, I'm gonna just fly into the water here, see if I can... Okay, I didn't actually make it, but I didn't take any damage, so that's okay. <laughs> um... So yeah, we go talk to Trouser now, that'll give us the roll move. We might need to spend our, um, our quills to do that, I'm not sure. Okay, yep, the learning roll. Um, he explained that you use it to go up a steep slope, it also makes you move faster, so it's very useful. Uh, for multiple reasons. And yeah, that's, that's the first grand home up there. So what we're gonna do is just head over that way. Uh, it looks like this. You can see that's draining that little power bar there. Uh, it fills back up if you just wait a second. Which I thought it did. Huh. Yeah, there we go. It just took a bit longer than I thought. Uh, there are ways to make it refill faster, which you unlock later on, so... Don't have to worry too much. Yeah, that's called a pagey in a cagey. I love this game. <laughs> That's so silly. I forget how to unlock that KG. I think we have to do something with these letters over here. 
But we haven't got the move we need to activate them. It might be to do with this. Hmm. We'll get to that in a bit. Anyway, for now we just want to head up here. Okay, so this is the first Grand Tome. We can activate it using the page we already collected. Yes, please. Unlock Travel Stack Tropics. Uh... So yeah, that, that's the first world unlocked. All we gotta do is just jump in that book there. Like that. <laughs> and we actually get a loading screen because we're switching to a different area. I'm a yawny. Hmm, the loading screens are a bit long. I think this was faster on the PC version. Uh, but it's it's not terrible, and they only come up every now and then, so it's not a huge problem. Uh, normally you would spend a lot of time in each of these levels. Uh, they're similar to uh, 64 levels in that you stay inside them for quite a while. I mean, not really 64 levels. Similar to Odyssey levels in that you spend a lot of time inside them. Uh, you can see that there's, there's quills all over the place. Uh, as the first quill we got mentioned, there are 200 in each world, so we do want to find as many as possible. Uh, you can actually pause and look at view totals here to see how many you've got, and how many you've got in each area. <laughs> see, 5 out of 200. Uh, and there's a bunch of other collectibles we want to get as well. Uh, you can see there's like butterfly crystal thingies, there's a little coin with a play button on it. There's a little... there's all sorts of stuff. Uh, we're looking for those. <laughs> uh, we want to get some more quills because uh, Trouser does have a bunch more moves to give us in this world, and we do want to get as many of those as we can. Uh, also, these guys... Uh, this is... these... these are... Can I... can I get you yet? Or do I need, like, another move? I might need another move. Hmm. I'll come back to that. Uh, basically the way it works is, uh, in, um, Counter Kazooie there were five coloured critters called Jinjos. In this game, they've been turned into those ghosts, and they're harder to collect. You have to do a certain action to collect each one, rather than them all, all just being, come on, come over and touch it. Um, but when you get all five of them, you get a Pagey, or, or a Jiggy, or whatever, depending on which game you're playing. <laughs> Here's another one. You can see that this one's fast, and so we've got to chase it. In order to catch it. There we go. Uh, so yeah, there's five ghost riders. I don't know why they don't want us to free them, since they seem to be trying to stop us from freeing them, but... Also, they're rhyming, which is kind of cute. In the original game, Gruntilda rhymed, the villain. So, it's, it's cute they're doing the same sort of thing. The skeleton over there being cooked. So if you wanted to, to eat some skeleton, you could eat this guy. Oh, gal, sorry. Condiments? Yes, I'll help you. Uh, we basically have to fight off 
these guys for a little while, and then we get to rescue her, I believe. really a way to fail this because you can't really get hit by them. And as far as I can tell they don't like eat the skeleton faster if you don't hit them away or anything. So I don't know. So you're pretty easy. That's our first pagey for this world. You could eat these for extra health if you wanted. We didn't take any hits though, so it doesn't really matter. These little like ice and fire berries we've been seeing around are something we can use when we get a certain move. I don't know if this is the one that Traza is telling us about, but it is a move that we'll be learning shortly. I believe Traza is over there? There's a slope you absolutely need to roll up. One of those slippery ones. Yeah, there's the trouser. Yeah. <laughs> so I'd love some advanced maneuvers. Okay, so yeah, you can see we can buy uh, any of these for 30 quills, but we only have 34, so we can only get one of these at the moment. Uh, I think, what's a good one to buy first? I'm gonna buy this one because I was just talking about it. Okay, so we can now eat the berries, and once we've done that... Uh, then Yuka will start spitting out, like, ice, ice projectiles and fire projectiles and stuff. Uh, which we can use for various things. Uh, I'm not sure if there's any here that we can demonstrate with. Uh, we need a different move to activate that, so we can't actually do that just yet. The, the worlds are quite, you know, expansive, uh, much like Odyssey Kingdoms in terms of their... Uh, you know, size and general non-linearity and that sort of thing. Lots of stuff to do all over the place. I forget what this was about. Interestingly enough, 
we're sort of floating here rather than staying on the ground, so that's a bit of an interesting quirk. Um, hmm. Ah, there's something. Can I reach it yet? I'm not sure. Maybe. Yep. Play coin get. Uh, so that unlocks, a, there's like a big arcade machine somewhere in the world that we can use by putting one of those play coins into it. Um... Okay, I'm at 30 minutes. I guess I'll start talking about this port and about the game in general. So, ukulele, I like it a lot. Uh, it has a lot of charm. Um, it's, it's enjoyably similar to the Banjo-Kazooie games, uh, while having its own identity, which I like. Um, I do like how they've updated some of the more questionable elements of those games. Um, like having Dr. Puzz, who's around here somewhere, instead of having, uh, you know, that whole witch doctor stereotype thing, which was, which was not great. Uh, so that's an improvement. Uh, I think what I'm meant to do to get that... I just eat one of these berries. And then I head up here. I think that's how you get that ghost. Yep, there we go. Uh, so yeah, you can see I can shout little, little, uh, ice crystals once I've eaten the ice berry. Um, so yeah, uh, I like the changes they made there. I like how some of the mechanics that were prob annoying in um, Banjo-Kazooie were fixed. Uh, in the original Banjo-Kazooie you had to get, you got a note high score based on how many of the 100 notes you got. Uh, and if you died at all, it, like you had to start over, all the notes respawned and you had to start from the beginning. Um, which was super annoying. Uh, they actually fixed that in Banjo-Tooie. Uh, they made the notes save, but they also adjusted how they were positioned to make it easier to save them by putting them into groups instead of having individual notes. Um, either way, that fixed that. Um, this game, the quills they saved, and they come individually, so it's, you know, it's, it's the way it should have been originally, but technical limitations. Gonna tank my way through there. Oops. Fall down by accident. Oh, there's some stuff down here, so I guess that was sort of worth doing. Um. I think this is running fine on the Switch. It, it looks good to me. Um, I don't think it, it's like noticeably uglier than it was on the PC or anything. The colors are still bright and vibrant. The gameplay is still pretty much the same. I'm not seeing any like severe frame rate issues. It looks fine to me. Um, I may not be the best at discerning when there were frame rate issues, um, but it seems to be running fine. I don't know if this is running at 30 or 60. Um, maybe someone who's more of an expert on that sort of thing could, can tell. Um, but whatever it's running at, it, it looks fine to me. Nice and smooth. Uh, it's controlling very well with the Joy-Cons. They didn't really do anything Switch specific as far as I can tell. There might be like some uh, Nintendo characters making cameos or something like that. Uh, I know in the original version of the game you, you got to see Shovel Knight and a few other characters from other indie games, so they might have added some Nintendo characters in this version, which would be kind of cool. Uh, or they might not have done it, it might just be the same game. Uh, it doesn't really matter, it's fine that they didn't, you know, switchify things up. It would have been a bit annoying, honestly, if they'd added, you know, motion controls and stuff. Um, the game works the way it is with regular controls and doesn't really need to be adjusted in that way. Um, just being on the Switch and therefore being on a portable console is probably enough to make this port worth existing. <laughs> um, I don't know where I'm going, I'm sort of wandering around. Um, that's sort of the appeal of this game though, the exploration. Same is true of the original Banjo Kazooie, of course. Having these big, explorable levels. Lots of stuff in them. Is there anything up here? It doesn't look like it. Hmm. Um, but yeah. 
Overall, yeah, I really like this game. I think the Switch, Switch port looks pretty solid. I haven't noticed any, like, um, you know, severe game-breaking bugs or anything. It seems to play fine. Um, I believe when this game first came out, there were some bugs in the original version. Uh, that eventually got patched by the time I played it, so I didn't understand why everyone hated it so much. <laughs> uh, I would imagine whatever, whatever it was that got patched is also patched in the Switch version, so I'm sure everything is going to work fine. Um, as far as I can tell, everything's super playable and working good, so that's good. Um, I won't go on too long. I don't want this video to be super long without not much happening, apart from me wandering around grabbing quills. So, uh, I guess I'll call that a video. Um, so that's that's it. That's ukulele for the uh, Nintendo Switch. Uh, I don't know if you can tell what the controls are like, but... They're, they're fairly traditional, I would say. Um, I'm just using the left analog to move around, the right analog to scroll the camera around. Uh, I am using Joy-Cons. It will probably work with the Procon as well. Uh, I didn't try, but I'm pretty sure it supports the Procon. And it'd be freaking weird if it didn't. <laughs> so, yeah, um... I believe this game does have some sort of two-player mode, but I've never tried it, so I don't know if it's, like, good at all, regardless of whether it's good on the Switch, so... I, I don't know. Um, I haven't got anything else to play with here, so I can't really test it. Oh, here's Dr. Puzz. I mean, here's a machine anyway. She should be around here somewhere. There she is. So yeah, here's Dr. Puzz, who's a cute alien scientist girl. And I think that's a dramatic improvement on Mumbo Jumbo in the original games. Um, so I'm really glad they made that change. Obviously they had to do it because, you know, they didn't have the rights to use the characters in the original game, but the fact that they did is pretty cool. <laughs> uh, I believe once you activate her, um, zappy machine here, which we can't do yet, uh, you get to turn into one of those plants, I think? It's different in each level, just like the transformations in the original game, so that's cool. Uh, the camera just got a little stuck on that tree there, so that's less than ideal, but it's okay. Um... But yeah, overall, I think this is a pretty solid game. I think it's not quite as good as Super Mario Odyssey, control-wise. Um, but it is older than that game, I think. And it's kind of forgivable, I guess. That it isn't quite as good as a game that came out later than it. <laughs> oh, I actually did need healing. I didn't realize I wasn't full butterflies. <laughs> um... But yeah, um, I think that this is a a good Banjo Kazooie game, despite the fact that Banjo and Kazooie are not in it and it has different characters instead. Um, I I enjoy uh, the visuals. I enjoy the general gameplay. I think the controls are mostly pretty solid. Uh, again, not as good as Odyssey's. This little double jump, compared to the way, to the to the amount of mobility Cappy gives you, is it's just. It, this doesn't quite measure up, but uh, Banjo-Kazooie was always about having lots of different abilities you unlock as you progress, rather than just having really good movement from the, from the get-go, so it kind of makes sense. Uh, I believe you get to you learn to fly from any spot in, anywhere at some point, so once you learn that, it's going to change a lot of things about the platforming, obviously. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's Ukulele, a game that... Uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say this is, like, worth getting a Switch for, because it's on other platforms and Odyssey is better. Uh, but it's a very solid game, and I would recommend picking, picking it up if you want to play another platformer. And you're, you know, you've already played Odyssey. Because <laughs> Odyssey is amazing. Uh, yeah, I messed that up real bad. Because I'm terrible at, at the video games. I believe one of the, one of the ghosts lives in this area. Uh, as I mentioned, you gotta go to a five to get a get a pagey. Pretty simple. Da, 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 da. Um, so yeah, um, I think I'm pretty much done talking. I'm, I just keep rambling on and on because that's what I do. Uh, there's a cute pig here. <laughs> um, and yeah, yeah. Thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. Um, I hope 
it isn't weird that I did a first thoughts video about a game that I've obviously played before quite a lot. <laughs> um, but, yeah. Um, yeah, this port looks very solid, and I think I would recommend playing it. If you want to play this game, and you have a Switch, and you want to play this game on a Switch, then that's something you can do, and, and something I would encourage you to do. Because it's good. It's a good game. Uh, yeah. The end. Hehehehe. <laughs>